Have you ever wondered how to troubleshoot and or replace your bottom bracket, specifically square taper yeah. bottom bracket? You're about to find out, so let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona, and you are watching another great episode of Toolbox Topic. I'm joined once again by my co-host Brandon Van Leeuwen. Brandon, how the hell are you? Ah, uh, PG. Ah, nice. <laughs> and coming to you once again from the Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. It's because where the cool kids hang out, and me. And today, like I said, we are going to be talking about troubleshooting, maintenance. We know there's very little, but still, yeah. we'll talk about it and replacing your square tapered bottom bracket. Right. I like this topic because this is kind of where, if you want to start tinkering with your bike, mm -hmm. this is kind of where you're going to start. This is a fairly, a more advanced okay. um, fix than some of the other ones we've done, Okay. but it's still within the realm of uh, a, a home mechanic. Okay. I like it also because it only takes a couple of specialized tools that are very inexpensive. Okay. So you can invest in these tools, do it at home yourself, get a little satisfaction about doing something yourself and learn a little right. bit at the same time. Nice, so, I like it. Yeah. All right. Very easy, but it does have some steps and it does have a few quirky things about it. Right, so we'll sometimes a little that. bit finesse. Yep. And why are we choosing the square taper? I mean, there's so many different styles of bottom brackets. Yep. This probably being the most common. Um, what are some other bottom brackets that people may come in contact with? Uh, you might see press fit, you might see, let's back up. There are so many bottom brackets that it is a rabbit hole of information. Which we will as, talk about in another video. As far as compatibility, right. spacing, it makes my head swim. Right. A lot of times I have to really go to the computer or go to the owner's manuals to make sure that I'm getting the right crank or the right bottom bracket for the crank or the frame. It is a it is a mind-boggling experience for okay. me, which is not too hard to achieve, but. <laughs> Anybody who's watching, been watching this for a length of time knows that statement's true. But the, the situation of bottom brackets today really is, does drive me crazy. There's so many types and so many compatibilities that, that's why it's always fun to do a square taper right. because it's, it's right. fairly straightforward um, and it's easy for someone is, that's actually. watching to do at home. It is, and we'll- Without getting in too much trouble. Yeah, and our <laughs> next video is gonna be more nerdy, the different bottom brackets, why there's no unification of the bottom brackets. Everybody thinks they've reinvented the wheel when it comes to bottom brackets and compatibility. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll get into that in a in a future video. Well, it actually probably be the next one you guys see the full yep. uh, full blown toolbox topic. And again, the square taper kind of falls in that line. We're still going to see a square taper bottom bracket or something very very similar up in you know that maybe up into the thousand dollar range. So, right, it's still a broad segment component on these bikes. Yeah, yeah. And again, people that are just getting the cycling and want to start doing their own maintenance, it's, it's a great good, place to start. Good place to start. All yeah. right, well, let's turn on the other camera Okay. and uh, let's get started. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> no time to waste, right? And everybody loves these transitions. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brandon, you know what to do. Sound off, buddy. Five, four, <laughs> two. There we go. There we go. All right, Brandon, let's get with it. <laughs> All right. So why are we going to start digging into your bottom bracket in the first place? There's going to be two reasons. One of them is because you feel play laterally uh, in the bearing or you f hear noises or feel some groaning uh, coming from that area. So our logical step is to check out the bottom bracket. So checking over this way. The way that we're going to, the thing that's going to kind of alert us that, that there's something wrong is if we feel play this way in the bottom bracket, or again, hear that noise. So first thing I'm going to do, let's dig in right away, okay. is remove the cranks, the crank arms. And to give yourself a little bit of room to work, um, I like to take the chain off and just let it just carefully dangle inside here. If you have a single speed in the front, just remove that chain and let it uh, dangle to the back side of the drivetrain. There's All no right. problem there. So eight millimeter for these guys. And we're just gonna loosen up this nut and remove it. And again, it's nice because eight millimeter is probably something that most people have at home in um, just in your toolbox anyways for any other applications that you may have at home. Right. When we put these back on, these are nice big steel um, 
crank arm bolts. So we're just gonna crank those on really good when we get those back on. So now we're gonna use our first specialized tool in here, which is the crank arm puller. Okay. Should probably have these things more on my disposal. I apologize. But this little guy can be used with just a normal um, adjustable wrench that you probably have at home already too. So okay. you just need to get this guy. It's like 12 or 15 bucks. Not, not too bad. shabby, not too shabby. Yeah, and most people stuff. do have a crescent wrench. Yep. So I'm going to, this one actually has two sides. We're going to get into Octolink later on. This is our Octolink side. This is our square taper side. Okay. It's very important that we use the square taper side of this guy. So I'm going to back off the pin and you'll see that the tool threads perfectly into the crank arm. This reminds me of uh, what we refer to as a cartridge puller in plumbing. Oh. Seriously. And then you're going yeah. to do it and it's going to just pull yeah, that pull straight out. whole thing mm -hmm. right out. Yep. Using my adjustable wrench again, nice, easy tool. This is gonna, just as you said, push the crank arm off of the spindle. Yep. And then we're gonna expose the bottom bracket and I'll do both sides. There it is, I feel it coming loose. Oh, not loose not quite. And that's coming off, exposing nice. our square taper. Now I'm gonna get this chain out of the way. Just very carefully, watch your frame with that, just for the oils and also for scratching. Yep. Then I'll back this guy off again. Because Lord forbid we scratch a side. mountain bike frame. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scratch mine. So we are going to do the same thing on the other side, whether you want to edit this out or not. And if you have a stand at home, boy, is that a Helpful. better thing. But it can be done. Just I used to do a lot of my stuff growing up, just with the bike sitting against the wall. It can be done, or you get a little get a friend to help you out as well. And it does take a little bit of effort to get on because there that square taper does press onto the crank arm pretty well. All of you, and also we tighten the crap out of them when we assemble them, right? Because we don't want them coming off. So now that I have the bottom bracket exposed, um, one thing I'm going to also look at is the status of my crank arms. If they were coming loose, it could also potentially be because those squares, it's been ridden loose mm -hmm. and these squares have been like wallowed out. Okay. If these things are not a good, nice square um, profile, then I would certainly replace the crank arms as well, okay. because they're just gonna keep coming loose again. And then maybe you've already troubleshooted and solved one of your problems of that, that loose feeling in the bottom bracket area. But we've removed this, we've determined that the square is in great shape. We're gonna reuse these cranks, no problem. And now we're gonna move on to the bottom bracket itself using our other specialized tool, which again is not super expensive. And what I'm using here is just a Craftsman ratchet. Okay. Uh, what is that, half, half, half No, inch? that's actually a 3-8 three drive. 3-8 three, three drives, yep. Yep, it's going to be and standard. And it goes right there. But also, you could still use, it's not. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can still use in this one if your you adjustable to. wrench. Yep. But it is more cumbersome. So now we've, say we've um, felt the play in our bottom bracket. Mm -hmm. The first thing what we want to do is just make sure that it's tight. And it's important to know that the bottom bracket threads are, um, oh, what's the word? The reverse thread. Reverse thread, thank you. Is the word you're looking so, for? That's the exact <laughs> words I'm looking for. So the way I think about it is tight uh, loosening is always forward. Loosening is always backwards yeah. it's on not, both it, sides. Yeah. It's not righty tighty, lefty yep. loosey, it's the opposite. Just on the drive side, is that, is that the, the case? Yep. So the first thing I'm gonna do to troubleshoot this is just make sure that that bottom bracket cup is tight on both sides. And indeed it is, it is tight and I can feel that in the bearing. So if the cups are tight and I still feel play in the spindle itself, time to remove that guy, get rid of it. Okay. So these square taper ones. I'm going to show you what a new one looks like out of the box. It is a throwaway item now. It's a fairly inexpensive piece. Mm -hmm. and, and when they go, you, you don't service them. They have a 
They have a sealed cartridge in there. Okay. And so we're just going to toss them and put a new one in there. They're about 12 or 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. So, so we're going to just ditch it. We're going to 86 that guy. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're going to remove this by going forward on the non-drive side because it is a reverse thread. Thank right. you for your assistance. So I'm going to start with the non-drive. Loosen this cup all the way. And for those who are thinking about using an impact drive for this, maybe you got a <laughs> Milwaukee battery powered impact, please don't. Don't be that person. Not necessary. Because then you're going to be bringing it to Brandon and he's going to be like, I know I told you and taught you how to do it your damn self, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's your first cup out. I'll okay. remove the drive side cup as well. <laughs> Come on. Oh, there sure we you, go. I was going to say, you sure you're turning that thing <laughs> the right way, Brandon? <laughs> and at one point, we can remove it by hand. Yeah. Let it go a little bit easier. So cool. We're in there. We've removed the bottom bracket. Easy enough to do, provided we go the correct way. Right. Now, this is a brand new bike, so obviously it's nice and clean, looks good inside there. But at this point now, I'm going to inspect the threads. And I'm also going to, you're going to find if you have an older bike, there's going to be a bunch of dirt and a bunch of maybe rust and a bunch of crap inside the threads here. Right. So what I would do then is get a rag, clean it out, maybe a little bit of um, a degreaser. Make sure that these threads are all cleaned up real nice and good okay. before I install my new bottom bracket. All right. Now, <clears throat> if we look at this one, it's all greased up already. And I probably should have my glasses on, but I don't. But it's going to tell you drive side, non-drive side. I think it says left, right on this guy. Mm -hmm. And it was also going to give you a couple of measurements. One of them is going to be your bottom bracket shell measurement. Okay. And the other one is going to be your spindle length. These two pieces are critical when you purchase your new one. Again, pull this guy out, use those numbers if possible. But if you don't have those numbers, get yourself a caliper. <laughs> Luckily, I have this little digital caliper here, and using this guy, I'm going to measure the spindle length from end to end. This way, get the reading there. Okay. So that's my first reading. And then I'm going to measure my bottom bracket shell using this guy. Right. There's two bottom bracket shells, 68 and 73 millimeter. Okay. Uh, hard to eyeball, but if you measure from outside to outside of the bottom bracket shell, that will give you your second measurement. Ah, okay. 68 or 73. Okay. It will get more complicated as the bikes get more sophisticated, but for right now we're using some really uh, basic, stuff. basic stuff, so okay. that's good. So we've determined that we have our new bottom bracket. Let's pretend that the one we took out is our new right. bottom bracket, nice and shiny and new, and we've cleaned up the threads. It's time to reinstall this guy. Now, <clears throat> You may get a bottom bracket with a plastic non-drive side cup, in which case you're not going to put any grease on that. Uh, any metal ones, a light layer of grease will do on the threads of the non-drive side cup. Also a little bit of grease on the threads of the uh, drive side cup as well. Just a very light layer just to keep the creaking down. Right. Um, <clears throat> And that will be all that's necessary. This one's already lubed up from the factory real good with that um, Shimano snot, we call it. Right. Uh, so we're not going to do that, but don't forget to, it's a critical, critical part. So we are always going to start off by reinstalling on the drive, drive side. side. So we're going to use the entire assembly. Come on over. And what I always do is go loosen first and you can feel it kind of click into place. If you cross thread these guys, you're done, you're hosed. So go <laughs> on the loose side first, feel it kind of settle into place. And then you can start to hand thread it back. Make sure it's nice and easy. If you feel any resistance at all, Stop. please back off and then just start again. So that feels good. Also this side as well. I'm gonna make sure that the grooves are on the outside of, obviously. Again, I'm gonna back off first until it kind of falls into place, until I feel it, the threads dump. There it is. I'm going back and I'm going to leave this side loose for just a moment because I want to tighten my drive side first. Okay. Using that tool that I have on my ratchet. Yep. 
Cost. Well, you're so used to going Cost. one way, but <laughs> we won't hold it against you, Brandon. It's all right. You can. Now, these guys, <clears throat> they're tough. So give it a good, give it a good, eh. so once you get it tight, eh. okay. there you are. That's I'm one surprised side. you're not talking about a torque setting. Brandon. Not on these guys. About the not torque on setting. these guys. So now it's time to tighten this guy up. All right. And the nice simple thing about this is if you get the right bottom bracket, you don't have to worry about spacers. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Right. Uh, it's going to go right in. If you measure your spindle, say it's a 117 millimeter spindle, you can go down to a 115 or go up to a, in some cases, a 122, especially on a, on a single speed in okay. the front. Uh, but a few millimeters off is not going to not going to make a huge difference. So if you have to improvise a little bit, a few millimeters off, you're going to be just fine. You'll be fine. Okay. Especially during COVID, we improvise a lot. Right. <laughs> Lack of parts. Got to do what you got to do. Yep. But if you go too short or too too long, then you might have sh troubles with front shifting. Um, you might have trouble with spacing in the in the crank in the future. But okay. Good to know. So there's tight, and then there's tight. <laughs> so now my bottom bracket is back on. I'm gonna feel it feels good, good and tight. Everything's nice and smooth on the way in. We're going to reinstall the cranks and okay. we will be ready to ride again. Right. Don't forget this, your chain. This, I don't want eight. you to have to back anything yep. off. <laughs> so I got my eight millimeter. Mm -hmm. I got my eight millimeter, baby. Again, very carefully, just kind of hold this guy here. You can reinstall the chain for this. And then obviously make sure your cranks are lined up. All right. So that, <laughs> so that doesn't feel goofy going back on. Give it a little pop just to seat it. And then we're going to reinstall our crank bolts. Uh, these guys look like they have a little bit of Loctite on them, but you can also just a light layer of grease is not a terrible idea for these guys. All right. Reinstall the crank arm bolts. Uh, again, these are big eight millimeter steel crank arm bolts. So we're going to go tight and then a no, no it's worry about torque. It's very scientific. Yep. Like I said, Brand is usually the one preaching <laughs> about torque. <laughs> and you can use the crank arm actually for a little bit of leverage as well. And you'll you actually feel the crank arm kind of seating onto the spindle as well. That that's good. So that's tight, and then. There we go. All right. Don't give yourself a hernia, dude. <laughs> Blow out your O-ring, although that would make for a great fucking video. <laughs> Whoops. I'll have to bleep that out. So that's tight. And then a... <laughs> and there we have it. You're ready to go again. And hopefully you have a nice, quiet, tight bottom bracket ready to go. Sweet. All right. Let's go back to the other camera. Ready? Well, you are certainly correct, Brandon. That is not <laughs> a necessarily a technical uh, replacement thirty dollars in tools granted you already have a crescent wrench and a three inch yeah. drive socket yeah. um yeah man just it's boom, not bad boom, boom. no not, not at it's all fun to do it's, it's certainly not rebuilding a front suspension it's a satisfying <laughs> little job yeah, to do especially when absolutely. the creek is gone the play is gone and i can imagine if you haven't done it yourself before it might take you half hour 45 minutes you know again if you have a bike stand and you have some of those yes. things yep. um but yeah, and the fact that yeah, most bottom brackets are throwaways today. There's yep. no sense in it's maintenance. It's kind of sad. You know. We should do an open ball, a real bottom bracket, yeah. like old school. Old one. school, yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. To that'll do. be a video coming up next too, All for right. sure, guys. <laughs> I like that. So, but again, something that you can do at home. You can't, provided you're just careful and methodical. You can't really mess it up too bad. Yeah, no. Unlike press fit ones that you could. <laughs> Which my fuel has, and we'll get to that one. Trust yeah. me, guys. Um, all right. Well, there you have it, my friends. Troubleshooting and replacement of your square taper, taper yeah. bottom bracket. There Hopefully we go. it was helpful. Right. I don't know why I'm having such troubles today, guys. I swear I haven't taken a muscle relaxer in over 16 hours. So, all right. Seriously. Um, that's it. Like, subscribe, bell notification. The trifecta that we like so much here at Get Out Arizona helps out the video, helps out the channel. There's going to be some links down below. The most important one is Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix. 
have any questions about today, you can comment down below, obviously, or you can give Brandon and one of his great peeps a call. They'll be more than happy to help you out with whatever you need. Um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the devil's work, the social media, but we have to have it. Get the word out there for Get Out Arizona. If you want to follow us on our day-to-day -day affairs, that's where you're gonna do it. Show us some love. Also, uh, the other links are gonna be Amazon affiliate links. If you follow one of those links and you make a qualifying purchase, we receive a small commission. You don't get charged anything additional and it helps out with coffee, gas money, and park passes, the other trifecta we love so much here at Get Out in Arizona. So on that note, my friends, what do you always say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out, Arizona. Yeah, with conviction. <laughs> we'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll see you next week, buddy. Bye.